As Bill Shankly once said, some people think football is a matter of life and death. I assure you, it's much more serious than that. The World Cup is the most watched sporting event in the world, with 32 teams battling it out for the most coveted prize in football. For the first time in history, an African nation will host the tournament this year. Seen as controversial by some, and by others as an example of soccer's ability to be progressive and inspiring. How will England fare? Which teams are the front runners? And who are the rank outsiders? To discuss the beautiful game, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, award-winning writer and graduate of the University of Warwick. Hello. And Carl Pilkington, a man with a head like a fucking football. <clears throat> An orange one. All right. Oh, I'm finished. Cut! All right. What are you doing? I'm trying to calm my gums down. We well, don't do it with water. What do you do it with? You're trying you to do calm it with, your gums You do it with meditation and hard drugs. <laughs> What's the problem with your gums? When I'm stressed out, my teeth now. What? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Say that again. When I'm sort of stressed out, my, my gums and my teeth now before I do. It's like a weakness. So what's up, you've got a toothache then? Mm. I thought you went to the dentist. I did, the other week. Well, what's wrong with your teeth then? It's just because you're stressed. I don't know. Why don't are you know. stressed? What have you got to be stressed about? I don't know. That's, that's, what, that's what's weird with stress, isn't it? No. Your body can be stressed without you realising. That's what no, kills people. Stressed. No, 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 no. You're stressed because you feel stressed and then your body gets weak because you're... No, because I'm pretty good. I, don't, I never feel stressed. That's part of my problem. That's not I am problem. stressed, but I don't know about it. That's well, why that's it's make any sense at all. It's number one killer. <laughs> <laughs> what? What yeah, do you You mean? never get stressed. If you don't feel stressed, how are you stressed? But you must be stressed if you're too right. fatigued. It's like saying, I didn't feel I had a pain, but apparently I did. Listen. Go on. I was in Israel recently. Mm. I had a bag put over my head, chucked in the back of a van. Now the thing is, I kind of right. thought, well... It wasn't isn't... a blind date, by the way, and he wasn't <laughs> being um, arrested or kidnapped. It was a it was a training thing, wasn't it, for yes, kidnapped situations? Yes, but I didn't know. I didn't know. What, you didn't know they were going to do it? Brilliant. No, they don't tell me anything, do they? That's good. So, so what th happened then? So the thing is, that happened... I had a panic on a little bit. Afterwards, they took the bag off, I realised everything was alright. I was calm, but my body was shaking. And that's what that I'm saying to you. That doesn't make any sense. My body, as far as my body was concerned, it had just been kidnapped. Right. But I knew I hadn't. Anyway, <laughs> football. The, you know the bag they put over your head? Was it like a tennis racket cover? What what shape was it? You sure they just didn't go and thought, oh, I thought I'd just bought the world's biggest orange. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Right. Soccer. Yeah. The World Cup we 2010. We thought we'd jump on the bandwagon with every other fucker who's doing a World Cup podcast. Yep. Um, uh, even though we've got nothing to say about it. Whoa! What? I've got a few things. Yeah, but it's gonna be so disappointing. We're gonna get <laughs> excited, we're gonna sit down. In fact, by, if you're listening to this now, England are probably out of the fucking World Cup. <laughs> oh. I disagree with you, I'm right behind the lads. Yeah? Right, okay. But, do you remember, because I've watched the World Cup a few times with Ricky, in b different projects we've been doing in the past, we've been yeah. in different situations. Mm. Do you remember when, I think it, the last time we qualified, we were doing um, a project, and uh, we were uh, we watched it together in a hotel room. We were watching extras, right? And uh, we're making extras, making extras, extras yeah. And um, we watched it. We said, "Oh, I'm going to my room." I went to Steve's room, but of course, in the hotel room, it was just like a big bed. So we sat on the bed together, and we thought that was a bit intense. So I put a line of pillows down. But I don't understand what to my. It, he would put a line of pillows between us. Now, he knows I'm not going to jump on him. No, I know. He's not going to jump on me. No. But he's still terrified that some kind of, like, some kind of paparazzi is going to sort of <laughs> parasend down <laughs> the building and peer in and take a photo of us. <laughs> and that's before we've got time to explain that we're just watching the football. We're... It's already printed going, well, this is clearly evidence of their game. Yeah. There's no way that they could possibly be sat on a bed just as friends. No, but hold on, though. Why were we naked? <laughs> Why didn't we just pop some trousers on? But I seem to remember that you, even though it was my room, you forced me to sit in the chair. It was one of those really uncomfortable box chairs. I said, it's weird, I can't get excited, we're having a beer, okay? So now we're drinking. Now we're drinking in bed. On the we're bed. In no, bed. no, no, no. We had our clothes on, we're on the bed, watching football. But I couldn't go, come on England, with a little man sitting next to me in the bed. Not little man at all. No, big man. And so I just thought, let's pop the pillows down. That wasn't enough. I said, Steve, I can't do this. I can't, I can't watch football with a man on a bed. I said, so 
go in the chair and he sat in, the chair. in his chair which is if a man of my size those tiny little crappy hotel box chairs are no good it's 90 bloody minutes plus the enemy it was my room i was furious i felt like i was um uh, uh like an old rich man just waiting to die and my little manservant used to come and sit and watch football with me <laughs> exactly, in the yeah. last days <laughs> the last of days. my time i'm in bed going oh it's gone again he goes all right i'm up, up later look rooney's taking a penalty <laughs> no it's gone it's all out i go oh dear so oh yeah let me clean it up we can put this on pause it's sky <laughs> plus it's Let's uh, open a window yeah yeah um but but the thing is that the most i like often i think football fans are very homoerotic they're hugging each other jumping on each other mm. swapping shirts and stuff so there's nothing wrong with it being intimate watching a football game yeah but i don't think i don't think gay people do that gay people don't run around hugging each other and swapping shirts do they they get stuck in carl would you sit on a bed right with steven in a hotel room right watching football okay you're pouring you're pouring each other wine and beer and shabby well no there wasn't that music playing there was the roar of the crowd and john motson doing commentary it wasn't it's not a sexy sound at all what do you think carl um Someone said, "I'll oh, come to my room. We're watching football." You got there, and he went. Da, 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 well, who was on the bed but that's first? That's not what happened. Who was on the bed first? Well, he probably got up to answer the door. So he, so we, I don't know. I came in. I thought, well, there's only a bed here. We sat down. We thought, yeah. No, but it wasn't. It was a chair there. So. Well, yeah, but you know full well that if you're in a room with Ricky, he's the one who's going to leap straight on the bed and demand that you. I just take the chair. Well, why would you be concerned with lying on a bed next yeah. to me? What's up with that? It's a bit weird, isn't it? Why, Why is it weird? I don't understand this. Because I've changed my tune. <laughs> it's a bit weird lying on a bed with a mate just watching football. Yeah, you don't do that when you go around a house, do you? Yeah, you but it's because you have a sofa and things. We didn't have that in the Yeah, room. but when you visit someone in hospital, you don't say, move over. You pop, you don't pop yourself down <laughs> yeah. next to him, you sit on the chair next no, to him. No, because it. you're not there in a relaxed situation for 90 minutes enjoying a game of sport. It's a, it's a more formal environment. Because mm. you're quite a sport fan, aren't you, Carl? Yeah, but not in, um... <clears throat> I don't like getting into things too much because mm. it can well, only be disappointing. True. I've never seen him get into anything. No. To be quite honest, no, I am a football fan, but I've got in, I've got, I've got it now to a point where if they lose, it only bothers me for about half an hour. Yeah, and then I move on because mm. the thing is, I'm not in control of it. There's nothing I can do to alter that no. that team. If I could go in and say, "Listen, you're lazy. You get your finger out. You move up front," but it's different. But it's totally. It's like getting annoyed with nature. There's nothing you can do. Mm. So let it happen. Watch it if you want, but don't get annoyed about it because it's totally out of your hands. Interesting yeah. that Carl's team tactics also sounds like he could be directing a gay porn. <laughs> <laughs> you get your finger out. You get up front. <laughs> You're lazy. <laughs> That's uh, amazing. What do you think of these people, though? I love it that everyone's a, an expert. Everyone's a pundit. You see these fat people in pubs going, well, he's lost a few yards up front. Yeah, you'd be a bit crazy. Mm. You fucking score a goal then, fatty. Mm. Wearing a football top. Yeah. I hate that. Exactly, yeah. They shouldn't make them for them. Shouldn't make them in that size. <laughs> it should be one size only. If you're fit enough to play football, you can wear one. If you're yeah. a fatty, you're not. <laughs> It looks ridiculous anyway. But what's that? That's what he you was talking doing. about. So you were a big fat slob with his belly out in an England shirt going, I could score from there. Go on then, let's have a go. Mm. Hey, listen, calm down. Don't be slagging off the fans because that's what it's all about. All, football's all about the supporters, isn't it? You know, mm. let's not forget these people paid millions to entertain us. If we want to drink till we're fat and eat pork pies and then put on an England shirt, we'll do it. But that is the it British way, that is the English way, that is what we won a war for. What difference does it make if we win or lose? That's what I always look at, the end result. How can you say you like football and then give us that argument? The well, only reason to watch football is, is the excitement of the challenge. Yeah, it's entertainment. Well, it is and entertainment. A bit of skill. It's nice to see a bit of skill. And well, that, that yeah, and because it's entertaining. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, enjoy the game for what it is, and then forget about it. If Fat Bob in the pub, mm. he's got his football top on. Mm, just. He gets all annoyed mm. when England, you know, lose. Yeah. What difference does it make? What difference does it make if they lose there or lose in the final? Well, I'll What's the point? Well, I'll tell you what difference it makes. I knew a fat Bob, okay? That wasn't his name, but I'm changing the name to protect the innocent and him. And he's not innocent, right? Was it Fat Dave? It was a big fat bloke, right? And he worked on one of the crews um, that used to bring in equipment where I used to work at the Students' Union, okay? And uh, he, was, he was massive, right? And uh, I think it was... 
90 or I mean, 92, the Euro, right, when England got knocked out, and he went mental. And he was so angry, he went out and he wanted retribution, okay. Luckily, there were no German people around, but the closest he, he could find was a sausage van. Some poor <laughs> bloke who delivered sausages and he turned it over. He got the van and he turned it over because it was selling sausages, so he thought that's German enough. No, well, if he's fat, he's probably just annoyed that it wasn't open. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, very excited because Peter Crouch is in the tournament. Now, Peter Crouch... You identify with him, I don't think, you? I love Crouchy. He's exactly the same height as me, yeah. six foot seven. He's sort of lanky and awkward looking. Right, but brilliant. I mean, still a very... You know, let's not forget that he is playing in the national squad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is a striker. You know, he's got an excellent track record of scoring for England. Admittedly, maybe not in the super top important games, but nevertheless... Tremendous. He's like your record. role model. He's like your pinup. He's a role model. He? he had the. He wrote an autobiography, which I, I was going to call my autobiography, Tall Stories. Crouchy got there first, but good luck to him. I give it to him. Yeah. I, I, I'm happy for him to do that. I once got someone who came up to me in a in a in a club once and said, "Are you Peter Crouch?" I said, "Yeah." <laughs> I thought she thinks I'm Crouchy. What's the problem? I, let's see how far we can get with this before the truth will out. But I she was went, disappointed. I didn't know you wore glasses. <laughs> no, exactly. I'm sort of off duty. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I don't wear them on the field. But. Do you think he'd have had a different career if he'd have worn glasses from the age of five, like you? This is one of the reasons I've not been a great footballer. Have you ever seen me doing any form of athletics or sport? No. Because I like to think I look quite elegant. You know, I feel like I'm actually in control of it. But when I look back, if like, someone's videoed it, I look like one of those giant costumes in It's a Knockout. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, where their arms are flapping and, and the they, just, head. they just yeah. fall over No real they... expression on their yeah. head. Yeah. But one of the things I was disappointed at, I was looking at, um, cause obviously around this time of the year, there's lots of advertising because of the footballers are all getting endorsements. And I was looking to see what each one was doing. And Wayne Rooney, he's got endorsement deals with Nike, with Nokia, with Coca-Cola, Lampard, Pepsi and Adidas. Peter Grant, do you know what he's advertising? Go on. Pringles. <laughs> it's not, it's not the coolest one, is it, Pringles? I mean, even the name Pringles. Really? I know. It's sort of like an insult, isn't it? It is. Who's that Pringle? <laughs> is that, hold on. Is that Crouchy? No, it's Steve Merchant. <laughs> I mean, I love Pringles. Yeah. And I'm pleased to see Crouchy's associated, but I don't was bother, disappointed. Don't bother mentioning Pringles, thinking you'll get some free Pringles, because he went on about munches, and then we got another fucking sniff. Oh, true, true. What do you think of that, Carl? But are you, are you a fan of Crouchy? You must be, uh... Uh... They're all much of a muchness. That's not Honestly, true, is it? That's I didn't want to come in here and start talking about football. I watch it. Um, what do I mean, you mean? I want to come in here and say, what, what, what a thing to say. What? Imagine, imagine Gary Lineker going, "Hello, what we BBC? I didn't want to be here today. Talk about football. Fed up. I've got better things to do." No, no, but it's something you talk about. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous coming in here talking about it before we've even kicked a ball. Who knows what's going to happen? If there's one thing that's good about it, it's that, isn't it? Not well, that's what I don't understand. I don't understand all this punditry, why we have a three-hour build-up, then they talk about it time then they talk about it for half hour afterwards. I mean, for me, it's like, it's kick-off, who won? They did, 3-1. All right, cheers, let's get on with work. But also, we like the whinging after. We are, a, you know, this country loves a moan. They love it. Yeah. I love it. Love a good moan. I don't know how we'd be if we won. We'd go, all right, uh, what would we talk about? Yeah. See, back in 1966, people weren't as miserable. No. Okay, let's, well, hang on, I'd like to hear this theory extrapolated. Well, they weren't, were they? People were, um, you know, the war had happened, like, not that long ago. Right. People getting on with it, 66, everyone's smart, you know, you dressed up if you went out, you know, they weren't on as much money. Uh, the footballers. Footballers. <clears throat> it, was, it was just a game of football. Whereas now, it's like all this build-up going on. Just get on with it. You know, I'm sick of it, honestly, I'm sick and tired of hearing about it. I'm with it. you, I'm with you. I do think it's ridiculous that there's a the, there's a match and the programme before, it's like two hours before it and then an hour after. Well, that's just a shameless attempt to keep people, I mean, let's be honest, you and I have been guilty of being involved with that, haven't we? We've done various little skits and sketches in the past. But that's fun. I mean, that we do that for us, not for them. Yeah. I, don't, I don't care whether people like it or not. I, I did it because it was fun. I dressed up, um, you and a dwarf. The day doesn't get better than that. Well, I was in a pub watching that year, and I'd forgotten that we'd done that, or at least that it was going to be shown that day. So I'm in this pub, it's crammed, obviously, and that comes on, the tennis on the big screen, and suddenly that's that sketch, right? A couple of things annoy me. One, 
No one was paying attention. <laughs> I was furious. I was thinking there's a couple of good-looking birds here. <laughs> but at least I'm on the fucking dummy. Oh, look at the dummy. Me and the sketch was uh, Ricky Gervais and Warwick Davis. And Dwarf. Yeah. Uh, I'm playing crunchy. No, I'm not paying attention. The few that were not amused at all could not get... My mother, of course, remembers famously said that's the funniest thing you've ever done, <laughs> which we knocked off in about 20 minutes. No one in the pub seemed interested. And then a few people, like, looked round, looked at me, looked at the screen, sort of shrugged, carried on going. Nothing. Nothing, but also kind of, it is embarrassing, that situation. I was on a flight, um, internal flight in America, and, uh, you know, on the, uh, the internal flights, um, you don't get individual screens, they give you individual players, but there's also screens all down the aisle sure. for people, right, but Ghost Town was on, Ooh. looked over, someone watching extras, <laughs> and, and I had to make sure that at no point did I glance up at the screen... Like he's watching himself, <laughs> yeah. and make sure I flicked over whenever it came up the office or extras. Yeah, if I'm on the tube and I'm flipping through the paper, sometimes there'll be an interview with you that I'm not aware is going to be in the paper, yeah. and I have to flip on by because I don't want to plug on the tube going, "Oh, reading about your mate, are you?" <laughs> yeah, I don't, don't get enough of him, do you? Need to be reading. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm I just... know. <laughs> Carl, have you been uh, recognised? Uh, do you ever get recognised much? Yeah, now and again, but I haven't done anything of any worth. However, it's almost like recognising a neighbour or something, because they sort of go, oh, it's him. And then the other one might go, what's he do? Go, oh, I don't know. It's not like I've done something... Right, of any worth. Of any worth yet. Yeah. None of us has done anything of any worth. It's all relative to the entertainment industry. You know, wh whatever you think of The Office, you know, I'm very proud of it, but I haven't secured a bunker in enemy territory. Mm. I haven't given a kidney away. Do you know what I mean? It's all relative. It's just, did you entertain anyone? Did you, you know, bring a smile to someone's face? Was it a laugh? I, I think you're forgetting all those emails I pass on to you for those people that have had traumas in their lives. You know, the earthquake victim. There's people that have lost relatives or had, you know, terrible life-threatening diseases and they say the podcast got them through. Doesn't that warm the cockles of your heart? Uh, well, normally it's, it's gone straight to you, hasn't it? And you just forward it me on, so it's... It's almost like spam to me. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't feel as special because it's like, here you go. Look at this. You know, unbelievable. I've got the new iPad. I've had it for a few months actually. It got sent to me by um by the inventor. That's who you're dealing with there, Steve. Bloody hell! You've got it, aren't still you? Still getting free shit. My favourite app on this is it that, that you just type in what you wanted to say and it says it. Carl has got a head like a. Yeah, it's good, that. It's almost certainly what it was designed for. <laughs> I haven't seen that on the advert. <laughs> Carl has got a head like a fucking orange. The cunt. Oh. <laughs> That's great. She sounds like a Radio 4 oh. news announcer. So what is that for? For doing that. Carl has got a head like a fucking orange. No. The cunt. Yeah. Did I mention his round head? <laughs> <laughs> good. Right then, so, uh I think I first became really excited by the World Cup, that famous year when Maradona did the handball. Do you remember, what was that, 1986? Yeah. Oh, that was so exciting. Because obviously he'd been so brilliant in that tournament, and then he did cheat, as we all know. Yeah. What do you, what do you make of that? Do you remember that moment, Carl? Well, that, was, that was really formative I, for I me. I know what I made of it. The cunt. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, isn't cheating part of part of all games now? Hang on, here oh, we go, this on. is controversial. Well, uh, 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 There's right. a lot of young people who look up to Carl as a role model. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the world we live in now, isn't it? It's, uh, get what you can, how you can. But what's your feeling? Are you the sort of person, I mean, have you ever cheated in a game? Are you that sort of person? Um, I just think, my dad does it a lot. Um. What, in board games and that? Yeah, just, just cards, you know, Monopoly. Um, How does he cheat a Monopoly? Just nicks a lot of the money. I'll oh, just straightforward nicks the money. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, I love that. But how do you not notice even doing it? He doesn't I'm busy looking at, you know, what properties I've, I've invested in and sure. stuff. And the money's just there, isn't it? See, I don't see the point of cheating No, I don't. Monopoly. I say that to him. I say, you're kidding yourself. You're kidding yourself. But to him, it, he's, he's broke the system, hasn't he? He's got round the rules. What do you mean I can only have that much? Who says I can? Bosh. Get some more money. Buy some more hotels. And in a way, that's life, isn't it? Mm. All people with loads of money now, you kind of go, have they made that honestly? Right. 
you know, I pass big houses in London, and I think gangsters got to be gangsters to have a house like that. Yeah. There's no way a normal job, someone who's because I know I'm trying to make money, and I know how hard it is to make money, because the more money you make, the more hands are out there taking little bits. So how the hell has this man bought this house? It's got to be a crook. <laughs> And so do you yourself cheat? Would you consider yourself a cheater? Are you honourable? In games. Well, just generally, do you cheat on anything? No, do you know what? The other week, I'd had a cup of tea and some fish and chips mm. at this pub, and they only took for one. And I went back the next day and said, oh, you didn't charge me for my fish and chips. What a fucking moron. I paid. No, I didn't tell her about the tea, though. <laughs> Got a free tea? The free tea, yeah. I just thought, well, you know, it's pretty good that I've gone back to pay for that. How much is a tea bag? Mm. The water's free. Yeah. I'll have that for free. So, that, again, that's just me. It's like the Mars bar and the paper round. Mm. It's me going, well, I've been good. The fish would have cost money. Potatoes are pretty cheap. But I'll pay for it. But for my goodness, is a little gift. Have a free cup of tea. But who's giving you the right to make that decision? That's me, that. That's me. I'm deciding there. Right. I'm in charge. I didn't have to go in there. I didn't have to go back and pay. I went back and paid. Tell you what, Carl, treat yourself. How's that? Have the cup of tea. All right, I will do. There's the fish and chips. Absolute if she, bollocks. If she was good at her job, <laughs> she'd have remembered. I thought she would have done. In a way, it annoyed me that she didn't go, oh, yeah, so you did. Well done. Thank you very much for coming back. Right. She just was like, did you? Not she looked at me. I know she, what looked you mean. Like, she looked at me like we didn't even know. Yeah. I was worrying about a staff member getting, sort of getting done yeah. or having to pay for it. You I know, know where you're coming at there. One of my first disappointments with football, I was um, I was ten years old, okay, and uh, one of the teachers was um, in charge of the football team, my junior school, and uh, I went down to Tatties. It was a shop in Reading. My mum, so it's it's white socks, black shorts, white shirt. Uh, got on. Went to knocked on his door I said uh, I've got my kit he went with the trials were yesterday you missed it that was it for a year right next year or where the trials were the trials got the trials okay he was going everyone I want to give it 100% right, really try hard really try hard he's watching people play right I made sure that every time I ran by him I was out of breath huh? <sighs> like, really trying. <sighs> every time I ran by him he sort of looked at me I think yeah right <sighs> came to it he said the team is this I'm left out Right, he went past me, and he went. You've clearly got asthma. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't make that team either. Yeah, and I didn't, and and uh, and I vowed that day never try hard at anything. Yeah, well, you've certainly kept that up. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that, Carl? Were you play? Do you play sport at school? Um, a little bit, but it was never taken seriously at school. Anyway, it was. I think the PE teacher was a geography teacher as well. So it's like you know. What does yeah. he know? It was all that. Basically, he put some tracksuit pants on that were always too tight for him. and see everything. What were you looking at? Because you, you just... couldn't help it. It was in the days when clothing was tight as it is. Mm. And then it was like lycra tracky bottoms. Oh, right. And everyone used to say, look at the state of that. But like uh, he's stealing sausages from It was ridiculous. Londis. Ridiculous. Um, so he didn't know what he was doing anyway. Th if anything, it was dangerous. Because he didn't know... What was what was the capability of a of a ten year old kid's body? Right. He, he put you through loads of stuff. Right. He didn't like me anyway because he wasn't that good. If you're not that good, teachers don't like I you. I thought do you'd be pretty good. I wasn't interested. That's the thing. I did right. relay and I got done for swearing. Got whacked on the ass with a baton. Hold on. What what why were you swearing in relay? When, when did that come into it? When did you need to swear in relay? You're running round, aren't they? Because the lads swearing? wouldn't slow down, so I couldn't pass it on. So I sort of said, "Fucking slow down," and then he heard me, and then went mental at me. But yeah, so it was never. I mean, Darren Campbell, the 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 athlete, I've told you, I don't know that I was involved in his his training. No, didn't know about this. Yeah, Darren Campbell, the. Uh, I think he won a gold medal. Didn't he used to push you around in a bath or something? Well, it's not the last of the summer wine. <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, it was in my go-kart. Right. And you used to, it was a motorised go-kart and you had to like pick it up at the back, run with it at speed and then drop the wheels down and the engine kicked in. But hold on though, that means you always needed two people to get you going on a go-kart? No one, he did it. Well, wh where were you? Sat in it. Well then you did need two then to get it going. What are you on about? 
he, a, I was sat in it. Yeah. He picks it up, mm. runs with it. Yeah. Drops it down. Boom, wheels start, engine starts, off I go. But what would you have done without him? Well, I couldn't have done it. So you do need two people then for this motorbike? Well, one to go. person. I'm sat in it. Yeah, but the, counting you, it's two people needed. Yeah. Fuck me, Jesus but what's Christ. So, what's so bad about that? Well, how can you, how can you have a play with yourself then? <laughs> and you go, can't. <laughs> um, sorry, this was part of his official Olympic training. No, no, but I just feel like that was part of his early training. Right. Which is the important bit in any, you know, job or... Well, walk, no, we should life. explain, people don't know, he was the bloke who used to push the bobsleigh in the Winter Olympics, wasn't he, for the England team? No, he was a, he was a runner. Well, how is that part of his training then? Pushing a fucking go-kart? <laughs> what was he doing? Because it's running. But he's running about a yard. No, no, sometimes more than that. Quite a lot. And it's just... Uh, God, what do you want? It's Darren Campbell <laughs> pushing me go-kart. Yeah, you seem to be taking half the credit for his gold medal. All you've done is sat on your arse, you lazy twat. I just kind of think he was, he was at the age where it's important. He could have made a decision not to go into it at that point. And I think he was never keen to get in the go-kart. Yeah. He was always keen to push it. And I used to let him. Now, if I said, no, I don't want you pushing me go kart, who knows? I'm just saying I was there at the start. Doing nothing. Providing nothing. Sitting on your ass. Sitting around. Well, letting someone it, else all right, do it. What athletes have you helped? <laughs> no, well, I didn't know this was a. Uh, let, let's, let's do a podcast about athletes we've helped. <laughs> You've not helped them, Carl. I'd have come prepared. <laughs> I bet if he ever did a book, an autobiography, he'd go, they, you know. The early years, Darren Campbell. Now I want to know if he has done an autobiography because we're going to be looking this up. I remember the training. I'm making a note of that for the next time we do anything. Round up Pilkinsons. Darren Campbell. Pushing a go kart. Pushing. Bold. You weren't bold then, were you? Well, orange, orange, hair of a Chinaman. Uh, orange didn't have very good hair. In crap. Cheap. It wasn't. Go kart. 120 quid it was. You know how many paper rounds that is? What I like when um, you're watching football on the television is if it goes to a close up of a footballer, it's just kick the ball out, miss the goal, it's gone for a free kick or whatever. If you stay on any footballer for more than 10 seconds, they will either swear or gob. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a fact. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never needed to gob that much. It's I don't care how knackered I am, I'm never gobbing like that. It's weird though. The other week, I just sat in the garden, slavering. <laughs> just to see if it would ever run out. And it's amazing. I don't know where it all comes from. What is the that's strangest that's, that's amazing. Just so to that, see if it would run so out. So now he's got to the point in his life where, uh, as a hobby or a pastime, or just to count down the minutes before he dies. Yeah. He sat in the garden... Creating sputum. ...slavering to see if he'd ever run out. I mean, that's amazing, Where does it all come from? Well, you create it, don't you? But from what? I'm always getting done for not drinking enough water. Salivary glands. But it's amazing. Honestly, I just sat like that with my head forward and just let it drip. Fuck wow. me! So Dude, Suzanne comes into the garden like and all she sees is her patient. boyfriend sat like something from one foot of the cuckoo's nest. Yeah, like someone dribbling. Been battered around the head with a cricket bat. No, she was, she was did reading you, something. Did you she answer back to a dictator? Yeah. What did he do? Battered me. But you I'd... got a trench up your ass as well. Yeah, that makes me slather. No, just sat there. What a fucking That's mom. extraordinary. What, what a div you are. And I just had my head there, and it continuously... I think I got bored of it before it stopped. <laughs> oh, God! I have never heard anything like this! Oh, God, I need a second opinion! Wanker. It's unbelievable! He just sat there with his head down, slavering, letting it just... That's extraordinary. You weren't even sort of like, <sighs> gobbing. You were just, no, just letting... Letting it, letting it sort of drop. So you, you got you've got <laughs> nothing else going on in your life, but you've got time to do this. So your brain wasn't even engaged. How long were you there for? I tell you what, no joking, probably a good fifteen minutes. <laughs> fifteen wow. minutes. 
bit of sitting with his head forward, Amazing. letting him salivate onto the grass. But do you reckon you could do that amount? I would well, never, do never, try. never, never do it. Never try. I'd never try. I'd never have that amount of time. I've never, I've ne I, I tell you now, you will never see either of us sat there for no reason in the garden with our head forward and our mouth open seeing how long we can create saliva. Unless I've just come out of a coma. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, or a gas attack. Yeah. No, I have a lot of, uh, I'm sort of goes unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great new dance duo! And it, please welcome to the stage, it's Goz Unlimited! <laughs> Amazing. D uh, didn't you have a little bit of problem in um, China with them all gods in? Oh God, I tell you, they're just spitting all the time over there. I don't know what it's all about. All the time, that noise of <sighs> oh, that continuously, that, everywhere you look. That good sort of footballer ball of gob that they sort of they spit and it kind of flies a couple of. I can't do it. I've tried. I can never do it. Yeah. If I try and spit, it just dribbles down my shirt. I don't That's know why amazing. I can't do it. That's amazing. I've tried in the past. Oh, it used do. to be cool. I remember when I was yeah. a kid, you'd hang around outside yeah, the spa. Yeah, yeah. What you've got to do is you've got to sit in a chair in the garden, just put your head <laughs> forward practice, and yeah. open your mouth and practice. just let the yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it all comes out. And uh, you'll probably get bored after about fifteen minutes <laughs> okay. if you're a fucking moron. I like um I like when you're watching the football on TV and it just goes quiet for a moment. There's like a lull in the action, and you just hear that that sort of plaintive horn. Yeah, come on England, <laughs> yeah. come on England. I just find it is so kind of mournful. <laughs> it's sort of, and it's just the fact that someone's taken the effort to take it. I don't know what instrument that is. Is it a trumpet or is it just? It never sounds as elegant as a trumpet. I don't know. Maybe just some kind of horn. It's sort of it's it's um, reminiscent of like battle though, isn't it? Yeah. Like there was the, you know you had all the cannons and everyone. Then there was one bloke that just had to walk. One bloke that carried the flag. But it's but. never triumphant. It's it's sort of you imagine you would you would have it at the funeral of a great footballer. Yeah. <laughs> Echoing around the stadium. It's just, it always makes me slightly depressed. Although, it is safer to be him in a football match than when you're walking into battle. Because if you're the fellow with a flag, you're going, well, you're a walking target. Yeah. Everyone can see target that. Target practice. And yeah. then they go, so, and even if it's dark, they go, I can't hear it, but I'll just, I'll just shoot at the sound of that trumpet. Yeah. And no one likes the fucking trumpet. No one wants to hear the Hang trumpet. Hang on, what's, what's the trumpet? What? What do you mean, a trumpet into war? Well, there used to be people that, that, that would, you know, Carry an instrument that would dun, 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 or you know what the, in the, a battle? Yeah, keep them marching up, keep them around the soldiers. Bloke with the flag, bloke with the drum, bloke with the trumpet. I mean, uh, think of this ventriloquist. This, this, yeah, this is God's guard. Yeah, um, diversity. They'd be, <laughs> yeah. they'd be a Suba at the back. Yeah. Suba at the back. I'll just keep out the front. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I'm not having this. I don't believe that oh, is. Uh, of course they did back in the day. Are you sure? That that happened. What about the bagpipes? What about them? <laughs> we better start going because I'm running out of breath. It's a good job this podcast is free because <laughs> if you just paid for that. It's not a good sound anyway. If anything, it might annoy you and then you're more angry and then you go mental with a gun. Well, I, yeah. I think that's that's what it's more about, isn't it? Because there's certain instruments that aren't appropriate for a war, like maracas. Maracas, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just, it's just a bit too carnival. Grand piano. Oh, one of those <laughs> that wouldn't sort be appropriate of, at all. No. That thing, that sort of. The little. Yeah. Penny whistle or whatever they When call someone it. gets shot at the arse, <laughs> that <laughs> is when the major goes, oh, okay, well, oh, bloody hell! She's got. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Uh, symbols are a good sound for a war. Good. You want symbols, Crashing you? symbols. Timpanies. Very good, exciting. Symbols, timpanies. So at what but point? But one of those, um, keyboard guitars. Yeah, that's that not as cool. Funky, funky but yeah. not as cool. Oh, the batteries have fallen out. <laughs> you don't need a wow wow pedal in a war. <laughs> no, no. So why, why has that stopped then? No, they still have, they still have military bands, don't they? Yeah, but that's more, that's what I'm saying, that's more, more like pomp a, and a Sunday yeah. sort of bandstand, mm. let's play, we will rock you. Yeah. And, yeah, you but know. the thing about modern technology is, you know, helicopters and tanks is going to get drowned out, isn't it? Years ago. Yeah. Nowadays, they send in a sort of really good sort of mega mix DJ. <laughs> yeah, Joe Just, Bunny. Yeah, exactly. Westwood's up there, going, giving it. <whistles> He's doing, like, scratching and... Come on, the place is mad deep with Taliban! <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about George Best using up his liver, then getting another one and getting pissed again? Clever. Well, that's always going to encourage it, isn't it? I've always said that. What? The moment we can replace stuff, people just go, oh, sod it. Like what smokers. would you do if you gave someone a kidney and, and, then, with it. and they started just you saw them down the pub again. doing drugs and shit and... Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hand it out to someone just, just like that, would I? I think you should be allowed to say, right, who's it for? Can I meet them? Right. And then have a chat with them. Right. Saying, have you learnt your lesson? Well, I'm going to do it. Okay, okay. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little um, kid who wants a, a kidney, okay? Um, and you've come to me. I'm, I'm at the top of the list. Hello. 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 How are you doing? Good. Are you going to give me one of your kidneys so I can live? I don't know. Um... Well, I'm at the top of the list, so why is your head so round? Right, so definitely not. Why? Definitely he's a little not. kid, look he's at him. He's a little kid. Pale. No, I need, I need a he's kidney. He's cheeky though, isn't he? No, cheeky. please, Lovely please, kid. round head. Can I have a, your kidney? No, you can't Oh, come it. on, right, you've got let's two. let's see another kid. Let's see another kid. No, Lesson I'm the top, learned. I'm Lesson top learned. of the fucking list. Give me one of your kidneys, you round-headed twat. No, and I wouldn't feel bad about not giving it you. Well, hold on though, can we have a second opinion from the nurse? Wanker. Thank right. you, nurse. I would not feel bad about walking away from that kid and saying you can not have a kidney. So you're gonna, you're gonna. Do you know what? I'm gonna take this kidney out and bin it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait. Do you know who that kid went on to become? Go on. Winston Churchill. Right. Well, maybe I helped. It's like Darren Campbell all over again. I made him stronger. I was tough with him. He saw how tough the world is. No, but he didn't. It, this is an alternative universe where he died because you never gave him that kidney. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can't worry about that then, can you? If you're gonna, if you're gonna start going that far back and forward and stuff, but I think it, I don't know what I'd expect someone to be like. Just want them to go. What do you eat? I'd, I'd say write down your diet. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm gonna really, I'm gonna treasure this kidney. I'm gonna treasure it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna really work hard and I'm gonna make something like more than you did. So I'll. Um, so my this your kidney is gonna be a lot better off for me than you, you lazy tosser. I'll tell you that. If you want, if you want okay. achievement, then. Uh, you know, I I'm gonna go to school, I'm gonna do really well, I'm like you, you thick little round-headed shit. So the quicker you get the fucking kidney out of your useless body yeah. and into mine, we'll all be happy, won't we? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll go away and think about it for a month. Well, no. <sighs> <laughs> there you go. Don't have to get nasty. Sick of it. I'm always helping people out. Uh that's a big ask, isn't it? If I came to you, Rick, in all seriousness, yeah, and and you could give me a kid, would you give me a kidney? What if I end up needing it? Well, yeah, but that's the point, isn't it? That you're doing something. Can I have moment. it back? Can I have it back if I need no. it? What? No, because I need it. I've only, I, mine are failing. I need at least yes. one. I need at least one. Yeah, you need one. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. This is on loan. Because if my other one goes, I want that back. Because then I'll be on one. Well, no, you. Yeah, but then we're both on one. No. no. Right, you've got y yours. Yours are fucked, so yeah. you might as well be on none. I've got two. Okay, I will give you one. Yeah. Right, with the express understanding that if my remaining one packs up, I want that one back. It's on loan. If we both live out our life, then so be it. But if this other one goes and they said, "Well, you need another kidney," I go right. I know where I've kept one for the last ten years. So it's you're going to come to me, right? Mm. You've gone knock knock. I've opened the door. My beautiful supermodel wife is mm. there. She's going on, oh, his kidneys are brilliant now. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving it. It's great. He never stops having the sex. Yeah. She's making her iced teas. Right. You know, she says, come in, Rick. Yeah. Sit down. Mm. So good. She says, I love you. Thank you so much. That's right. Don't this worry about lovely it. man. I know you've not got long to live because you're old yeah. and fat. Yeah. You've had a good innings. Well, you've had a good ten years, though, haven't you, with this kidney? And that was a, you know, but, but uh, I, I tell you what, love this man. You can return the And favor. he's so young and we've Give got, me back my fucking kidney. We've got two beautiful children. Right, i tell you what. Give me my kidney back and have one of theirs. Two beautiful kids. Yeah. Small little there you kidneys. Go. Small little kidneys are there's no good more yet. to choose from. They're growing you. They're small growing you. It's kidneys. like when you put a little plant in a big pot. They grow. You're, they're, they're catch up. They're, the kidneys are growing too. too so I'll have my small. kidneys back and you've got four to choose from there. Well, take one of each and you'll have two little kidneys to make one big kidney. Johnson, can you have this man removed from my house? <laughs> Would you give anyone a kidney, Carl? Suzanne. I'm sure you would give Suzanne tricky, a kidney. It's tricky, well, you yeah. obviously you'd give Suzanne a kidney, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, well, would you, or are you just saying that? 
disposal wood. I don't really like the idea of it. So if what you're saying, what are you saying to Suzanne right now if she's listening to this podcast? Carl, good luck. Um, bit of good luck. I, you know I need a kidney, and oh. it's got quite rare. Mm. Well, we've got the same sort of blood group and everything, so, uh, yeah, you've got two. I've got none. Bibbidi bob one each. Let's have a good life. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, you'll have to uh, have to have it. Which one are you thinking of going for? Because the, uh, I think the right one's a bit dodgy because they had the kidney stones. Well, you keep that. Do you want I'll that have, one? I'll have the left one. No, I'll, I'll tell you what. You have that one because when I was in all the pain, you were going. It can't be that bad. So you have it. Mm. It's in good working order. They've looked at it. Yeah. But it is prone to stones. <laughs> He's using this to get back at her. <laughs> saying it can't be that bad. It's like poetic justice. He can give her the kidney she didn't believe was that painful. So let her have that. And um, I don't know what's life like with one kidney. So you've got to be more careful. You've got di- you know, specific diets. Yeah, and it is more dangerous. It's more of a strain on it, but you know, don't like talking about it. It's all uh, it freaks me out. It freaks me out. It's all doing stuff now. The kidneys doing stuff. Yeah. My teeth are hurting still. Still got a little bit of toothache going on there. Mm. I've got a sweat on. All stuff's going on without me knowing. Germs within round. I've had jabs for rabies. I've had hepatitis A and B. I don't even know what that does. <laughs> I've had A and I've had B. That's whizzing round my body. Body's in shock, isn't it, at the moment? It doesn't know what's going on. I've had... Uh, How is it notifying you of the shock? Well, I think, I, I, like I say, I keep getting this sweat. And uh, what else have I had? Typhoid. <sighs> Doesn't that, shouldn't, all this stuff shouldn't be in my body, should it? And we don't really know, do we? They're saying, yeah, have this, have that, shove it in your arm, it's all right. But we don't really know. Long term effect. I've got rabies in me. I never thought I'd have to have that. Tetanus. I've had. TB. Well, enjoy the World Cup, everyone. Come on, England. Come on, boys. Had um, to go at them all. One for it for getting bit by a dirty monkey. <laughs> well, that's about it for the Ricky Gervais Guide to the World Cup. Um, it was very uh, informative and interesting chat there. Um, if you've enjoyed this one, um, you can um, get the entire back catalogue. All the guides. There's ten guides on uh, iTunes. It's under... What is it under now? They keep moving it around. They didn't like us clogging up the chart in the audiobooks. We were basically taking up the whole charts. They they made a new section, which is... Uh, isn't it like programmes and periodicals or something? Something like that. And now we're the top 18 in that. So, uh, yeah. Um, also, of course, Rick, if people like Carl's ramblings, they can see him and us in animated form. The Ricky Gervais Show coming soon on DVD. Just go to Amazon.co.uk or Amazon.com or play. I'll just get off your ass and go to a shop. (laughs) (laughs) Good luck, England. And thank you so much to Positive Internet. Those guys allow us to do these free podcasts. Someone's got to pay for these and and those guys do and do a great job. So enjoy the free ones, but buy the ones for a couple of quid as well, please. Carl wants another house.